At the United Nations today, Secretary General Perez de Cuellar met with Iraq's foreign minister and said a ceasefire in the Iran-Iraq war could be arranged by next week. In Washington, meanwhile, Defense Secretary Carlucci hinted today that after a truce is arranged, the U.S. might, might accept a Gulf peacekeeping force that includes the Soviet Union. NBC's Jim Mikoshevsky is at the Pentagon tonight. Jim, what's behind this signal to Moscow? Garrick, the U.S. just doesn't want to say or do anything that might hamper the U.N. peacekeeping efforts in the Persian Gulf or foreclose any options. So Pentagon officials are saying tonight that, yes, there could be a role for the Soviets uh, in the U.N. peacekeeping force, if there is one, but apparently they will insist that whatever the Soviet role, it be non-military. But, Jim, doesn't this represent a real change in American policy towards the Soviets in the Gulf because we've been trying to keep them out of the Middle East for many years? Officials here say it does not indicate a change in policy. The ultimate goals remain the same. End the Gulf fighting, reduce the number of U.S. warships in the Gulf. And today, Defense Secretary Frank Carlucci said the Soviets haven't been particularly helpful in the Gulf. So the bottom line remains the U.S. wants to keep the Soviet military out. Jim Mikloshevsky, thank you very much. Also in Washington today, the judge presiding over the Iran-Contra trial of Oliver North said some of the charges against North may be dropped. Federal Judge Gerhard Gazelle said that the central conspiracy charges will have to be dismissed unless prosecutors win release of secret documents which are crucial to their case. At the White House today, there was a meeting which attracted relatively little notice but was highly significant. President Reagan greeted Carly Gross, the new communist leader of Hungary. He is the first East European leader to visit Washington in 10 years. Gross has been in office only since May. He is pushing ahead with the reforms which have made Hungary the most open society and economy in the East Bloc. Mikhail Gorbachev has called Hungary a model of reform, but there is a danger. Economic crisis creates political pressures which could weaken communist control. Hungary is an example, a preview of what could happen one day in the Soviet Union. Peter Kent reports from Budapest. Chanting, we want democracy, these Hungarians aren't impressed by the wide-ranging reforms promised by their communist leaders this summer. The only solution to the present crisis is to reduce the power of the Communist Party and have more democracy. The demand for democracy is political, but the crisis they protest has economic roots. The molten fury of the steel factory, once the very symbol of Marxism, today better symbolizes Hungary's $18 billion debt, the largest per capita debt in Eastern Europe. Long unfulfilled dreams of a worker's paradise now include the specter of unemployment as unproductive overmanned factories shut down. And the gap between wages and prices widens almost daily, with inflation approaching 20% a year. Hungarian communists are counting on Karoli Gross to rescue them by getting the country out of the mess. They dumped Janos Kadar in May in favor of someone who sounds, at least, like the man who made reform respectable for the East Bloc. But Central Committee planners predict the first positive results will only appear in five to seven years. Many Hungarians, like writer Miklos Vamos, say that's not fast enough. That people are not uh, tolerant enough for such a long term. That is why I would call that dangerous. It's too early to predict just what the impatience may lead to. The government has allowed some unprecedented political freedoms in recent months, like this rally, the biggest demonstration in three decades, to protest the treatment of ethnic Hungarians in Romania. But when only a few thousand people marched through downtown Budapest demanding greater political freedom from their own government, the police broke things up with tear gas, truncheons and handcuffs. Prime Minister Gross supported the strong-arm police tactics, which proves, his critics say, he will not tolerate meaningful criticism of the Communist Party. The reformers Gross brought into the Politburo aren't passing judgment yet. This was an example of the current confusion in which neither the state nor its citizens knew how far they could go. The limits, the rules of conduct, have yet to be worked out. Everyone remembers what happened when things got out of hand here in the 50s and the Red Army blasted into Hungary to reinforce the communist state. 
There are still more than 60,000 Soviet troops in Hungary, but these Hungarian soldiers are increasingly assuming their Cold War duties. I fully support the reforms, but the first responsibility of the army is to be prepared to protect the country from any threat. More than a few old communists fear the party will be eventually threatened by the current reform program. That once begun, democratization will be hard, if not impossible, to stop. But while Karli Gross tries to put new life into the old socialist anthem, the Internationale, the demonstrators defiantly prefer the Hungarian national anthem. Reminder to their countrymen and the world that while reforms may be on the way, this is still essentially a police state. Peter Kent, NBC News, Budapest.